going to talk about nets. And these are for three-dimensional shapes. An unfolded three-dimensional shape is called a net. It's a pattern that we can cut out and fold to model a 3D shape. You can actually go online and type in net of a cube and print these out and fold them on the dotted lines. We can see all the two-dimensional shapes that make the surfaces, the faces of the cube. If we cut it out and fold it on the dotted lines, we can actually make a cube if we tape it together. See? The net of a rectangular prism helps us see the faces. It has six rectangular faces. It would look like this when it's flat, and we can fold it on the dotted lines and actually make a 3D rectangular prism by taping it together. See? You can see all the faces. And the net of a cylinder helps us see its two identical flat and circular ends, and its one curved surface that unfolds to a rectangle. So it's got a circle on the top, it's got a circle on the bottom for its base, and this unfolds into a rectangle when it's not curved. See? You can cut this out, tape this end to this end, and fold this down and this up, and make a cylinder. And the net of a cone shows us it's one flat circular base that's connected to a curved side that tapers to a point. So we can cut this out, it'll look like this, and we can curve this and tape it together to make the cone, and that's the base. That's the circular base. And the net of a triangular pyramid shows us it's made of four triangles. It's got one triangular base and three triangular lateral faces. So it would fold up like this, and we could make a triangular pyramid, see? Tape it together. The net of a square pyramid shows us it's made of one square base and four triangular lateral faces. See? We can tape this together. We can make a pyramid. See? And pyramids are named for the shape of their base. So a triangular pyramid has a triangle base, rectangular pyramid has a rectangle base, and a square pyramid would have a square base. Now, I'm going to have some helpful links in the description about surface area for grade 6 and grade 7 math. And you'll be able to find the surface area of these faces. And I hope they'll be helpful for you. So, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.